Welcome back to Rotten Reels Reviews, Rotten Rambling On. See, I told you I'd get it right. Well done. Yeah, I know. I, I, it's only taken us this many episodes. You present like you didn't just do five takes leading up to this one. I did nothing of the sort. He is full of lies. You continue Anywho. to say that. Yeah, as always, I am Jake, yeah, along with my ki- uh, chimpanzee companion here, uh, Coco. Ooh, ooh, ah. No, my name's Sean. It's nice to meet you folks. Sure, it's Coco. In my heart of hearts, it's Coco. Stop uh, rambling. What's this show about? Oh, oddly enough, rambling on and on and on and on about mm. whatever subjects will most likely not get us ever laid. Oh, let's do something about comic books. Yeah, yeah, yeah that gets panties just <laughs> soaked. Uh, just so we're clear, this is an adult podcast. There will be adult language, some adult uh, situations. Uh, Sean has informed me this cock out, rock out sort of scenario. I don't know. I'm old. I don't understand this shit. I believe when you talk about getting panties moist, you've already, you know, mm-hmm. it's a little late for the uh, Oh, yeah, we're pretty much warning. assured that yeah. nothing's going to happen for us. So today we're actually talking superheroes that are not directly relinked to DC Comics. That's your Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, so on and so forth. And a new reference to Marvel, your Captain America, Thor, Spidey, Iron Man, whatever the hell else you want. Pretty much anyone that somehow made it onto TV or film without originating with the big three. DC, Marvel, or Image. I can only hear breaths, and I'm going to be having to do a shit ton of editing. For those of you that don't know, would be such publishers as IDW, Dark Horse, Ah. Archie Comics. I am not reviewing Riverdale. I'm just going to put my foot down right there. Don't forget Valiant Comics, of course, who produce such great things as uh, Shadow Man and mm-hmm. Exo Man of War. Well, there was the uh, Captain Power Soldiers of the Future mm-hmm. that actually did. Oh, no, we came yep. after the show. Never mind. It doesn't count. Boys Though we will be breaking our rule for just a little bit because there was one, uh, one title we just couldn't pass up, oh. even though it was in the image catalog. Uh-huh. And that is Powers. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to freely admit that uh, I went through a good chunk of my write-ups and went, hey, you know what, I know this stuff worked great for Rotten Reels reviews, I might as well cheat and use this mm-hmm. existing written concepts. Plus, Powers is just such a good title. It was, it was, and it was actually quite enjoyable. No. Yeah. And then apparently, no one gave a shit. <laughs> Though, if ever I heard a good lead-in, that was it. So tell oh, us about oh, Powers, Oh, you were subtly hinting. My apologies. <laughs> well, let me give one moment to pull that information up. Excuse me when I whip this out. No, it's lines like nope, that. Nope, nope, no fallback. No, no follow-up. So, as I established, because of the trending superheroes that I'm asking, ABC, CW, Netflix, you're wondering why none of them had any real adult theme or interaction. I mean, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. obviously couldn't due to uh, certain bylaws. Hmm. And, uh, you know, forbidding any nudity or any of such of that nature. Very little, uh, kind of light on the violence, too. They were. And uh, a lot of that, I think, actually, we can blame on uh, some of the executive producers within Marvel for yeah. uh, what limitations. I'm, I'm really going to push that really under the D- uh, under the Disney blanket. Hmm. They, let's face it, they want to keep most of this stuff pretty PG-13. Uh, now, with that being said, of course, you had Netflix uh, handling with uh, Daredevil, Jessica Jones. Very true. Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and, of course, Defenders. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I know. We never got to see them, like, in a vulnerable state. Do they go clubbing? Are they out their library checking out books or DVDs? You know, we, you never see that level of true arrogance and then just drunk on their own victories. I guess that would actually be the, yeah, but that would so be the superpower cock rocking out. Or something like that. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So uh, basically, you're never seeing them as flawed human beings that, uh, with abilities exceed far beyond our own, and still having the inherent flawed uh, personalities or, or personality disorder. Yeah. So that's a real comfort right there. A guy who can smack your fucking car 700 feet straight up in the air. He's got depression issues. So we enter Images Creation uh, Powers, which, uh, by definition... This was written, produced, and created by Brian Michael Bendis, who pretty much is Marvel. Yeah, seriously, go through the titles. Oh, yeah? Ultimate Spider-Man, New Avengers, Jessica Jones, uh, oddly enough, Images Powers. And uh, realized that uh, the only real help he got was from a novelist, who also was working along Powers, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Charlie Houston. 
also did uh, All Signs of Death and Caught Stealing. Okay. And now most of our focus in question, focus? Most of our focus, or uh, the main story, is falling around Detective Christian Walker. While in the comic book format, is roughly about, what would you say, 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, oh, four? he's superhero yeah, proportions. Yeah, he's basically Superman in a suit and tie. Well, Minus actually, the then powers. he's Clark Kent. Yeah, yeah, so basically he is Clark. He just happens to carry a gun. Oh, so Superman 2. Yeah, pretty much. Where he or, went through the machine and came out. No, no, I think it's more of that Kevin Smith Superman uh, script, you know, with the giant fucking spider. I got you. And him, him razzing para- polar bears. And I, I actually read that script. It is a fucking acid trip. Superman lost his re-rides. powers in the... Oh, no, no. He oh. didn't lose his powers. The producer, the executive producer, didn't want him. None of that, quote, faggy shit. <laughs> oh, that makes he's sense. He's not going to have the costume. He's not. Gonna, he's going to be one of us. He's going to be like a guy on the street. And I'm going, you're a fucking hairdresser, and he's a writer. <laughs> you may have grown up on a street, mm-hmm. but that's only because you were in a cul-de-sac or suburb. <laughs> but, you know, I guess he didn't bitch because, you know, he needed the gig. Yeah. But, you know, no, getting right along there, uh, was it Charto Copley? Yes. Uh, District 9, uh, the A-Team, Elysium. The guy has done a lot. Yeah, I'm not, I will never be certain about the pronunciation of his name. I know. I'm sorry. I think I'm screwing up right now, and, um, oh well. So you are, but a not in his being name. Superpower being known as Diamond, uh, which gave uh, uh, augmented strength and flight and a certain amount of invulnerability. He wasn't, you know, he, oh, he was nigh invulnerable. Nigh. Nigh invulnerable. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> and this establishes he has been stripped of his powers mm-hmm. and actually has the mindset of being a decent detective. Because just based on instinct alone, he's actually pretty solid for that. But unfortunately, for the better chunk of this TV series, he is constantly pining for his powers. Which is different than the comic book, yeah. if I remember. In the yeah, comic book, he made he, peace with yeah, it he just quite a long time it. ago. I almost, I always got the impression in the comic he was kind of happier without them and without the yeah, public yeah, scrutiny. Whereas, and whereas the, you know, uh, I think he appreciated the dual identity in the, in the, in the series. Mm-hmm. And of course, though, what I love the whole aspect of their uh, powers division, their the uh, again, they're not getting any federal mandate or no federal government uh, backing this money up. Mm-hmm. So basically, they are understaffed, underfunded, and undermanned. They're kind of like a uh, special crimes unit in Metropolis, yes. only nowhere near the city funding. They basically use everything that they capture. So they got a talented normal with X amount of weaponry. Mm-hmm. They cobble that. They have it reverse engineered, and it gets put into the unit. They simply nickel and dime this whole organization because everywhere else they're constituted as a joke. So kind of like uh, SI in the Dresden universe. Yeah, very similar. The simple fact they got nickel and dime it all the way through. And that is actually a good uh, analogy. I know. Thank you. I spent all day coming up with that one. You must have. Uh, Of course, so we have the base of the storyline of Walker breaking in his new uh, uh, detective partner. Uh, Dina Pilgrim, played by Susan Haywood, uh, mm-hmm. 30 Rock, uh, Mother of George, the following Poltergeist series, uh, Vinyl. Anyway, so she grew up on, she now this girl has grown up on the cartoons that Diamond appeared in. Oh, yeah. For their whole uh, superhero structure, as it were. And Very, she feels uh, let down by be, being stuck with this bitter, cynical cop who's busting his ass a hell lot harder than he ever had to do in costume. Very Super Friends style. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And thank God they didn't go with that one. Right. Uh, basically, we established that Walker's greatest accomplishment was busting his former mentor, Wolf, who's played by none other than Eddie Izzard. Actually, really good performances it on It really his is. Part. And i got to be perfectly honest, you, you just haven't lived until you had to see uh, Eddie Izzard buck bear and covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is true. Well, that's so hilarious. No. Now, now, his basic level uh, uh, on that stage is that he can absorb powers and mm-hmm. all it's doing is rejuvenate him. He heals faster than Wolfie or Sabretooth. Well, all because he consumes he people. He shucks and devours people like so many oysters. It's sick. Though one could possibly blame the fact they didn't go past two seasons on the blood spatter special effects that they used whenever Eddie oh, ate yeah, somebody. God, that was Those just were terrible. Messy as shit. They were terrible. Terrible I mean, CGI. Well, I honestly did mostly CGI when I'm going, this is a perfect application for practical effects. And believe me, nothing 
will creep your shit out more, even if you pan the camera back. Mm -hmm. Nothing creeps out your shit more than seeing a ton of blood spat in a wall Mm -hmm. and just dribbling down. But, you know, the props department uh, had a long talk with those folks that made the Green Lantern movie. Mm. And they were like, trust us, CGI is the way to go. CGI the whole costumes. Yeah. It's beautiful. But remember, (laughs) that's all Ryan Reynolds' fault. It is, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I want to go with that. Uh, so we have different storylines, and we have uh, multiple plot points. We have a young girl that is kind of a wannabe and wants to be a powered uh, being. You have uh, an old friend of Walker's from his past who can teleport. He has this ex-partner slash love interest who is also a high-ranking superhero known as Retro Girl. The superhero kid. Wasn't that the... Uh... Wasn't that that Russian actress? Yeah. That, uh, 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 oh, was it Alicia? Alicia yeah. Rulon from uh, Urban Legends, Bloody Mary. All the high school musical movies. She was also in a horrible film called Vampire Chicks with Chainsaws. I <laughs> fucking laughed at that, and then I had to review it. How does that happen? How do you do all three high school musicals on one side of the I spectrum know. and, the other and other slasher end, flicks on the opposite I end? I can't even wrap my head around it. <laughs> Uh, I, I think the funniest part, though, uh, Retro Girl is played by Michelle Forbes of uh, uh, Star Trek Next Gen, Swimming with Sharks. God, she was in True Blood, uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica, The Killing. This woman's got a huge filmography, and I love the fact that uh, she has truly had some actual real-life issues that mm-hmm. women her age will get. Now, while her projected age, yeah, another little mm-hmm. tidbit of the powers, they age incredibly Incredibly slow. So while everyone else has aged about 20 years, they've moved two. They are almost immortal in that endeavor. It kind of similar to how Marvel and DC has always moved their age bracket real oh, yeah. goddamn slow. But what's so funny is that she made a comment. She goes, yeah, if, 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 I've eaten, if it looks like I've eaten something or I don't have my makeup on, everyone assumes I'm frumpy. Or they think uh, the, this pair of pants adds 10 pounds to my ass. She goes, and she, she described that her body had been posted, and they're dissecting it based on her age, based on the outfit she's wearing, whether she's wearing something as frumpy as sweatpants. And I'm just loving it because I'm going, my God, you have just described every supermodel who has the audacity to age have children. It was just kind of funny Mm -hmm. to hear this woman who could probably split uh, the very table we're, we're recording on in half with one of her hands. Well, I don't know. This is a very sturdy table. Oh, have you tested that, huh? Not with great kar- lengths. Not with karate chops, oh, but okay. Waka Waka. Yeah, I don't want to mention that. <laughs> don't forget, of course, oh, Johnny Royal. Johnny Royal. Yeah, Noah Taylor. I still love how Noah Taylor sounded like he chain smoked. When well, actually, his voice is a bit much like that, and you're just going, <laughs> "How is he talking that low?" And you're just going, "Jesus, what is he doing?" Kind of like the guy that played the uh, the TV show House. Oh yeah. Um, uh, uh, Oh, God, I completely blanked on his name. Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie, yes. Yeah. Sorry, my brain just went a little bit oh, there, too. <laughs> uh, well, not, well, not deeply pitched. It's all rough and uh, well, yeah, an American sounding. Yeah, that's actually not And true. then you go watch uh, A Little Time with uh, with Fry and Laurie. <laughs> and, uh, I personally, uh, yeah, for, for enjoying that crowd, uh, Peter's Friends is about as good it gets for that. Oh, yeah. So he must have an exceptionally long cock. <laughs> just, but, yeah, it was great. <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, again, the staple, we would have, they classified as graphic violence, and in some circumstances, the practical effects did stand up on that. Uh, they had actually fairly realistic crime sequences, too, where mm, people yes. were quite literally dead, and, and you're, you're, you're there with the cops just going through the, through the motions. And I loved how, how cold-blooded someone are like, yeah, you want to get lunch? And I'm like, dude, that guy's head's caked into the wall, and you want to get a hot dog? <laughs> Fuck you. But, uh, no, and um, there was sexual content, but yeah. you, know, you didn't see any graphic. No. And, yeah, everyone swore like sailors or mechanics. I know I've been around two of them. But, uh, overall, it kind of felt raw and unfiltered, and it truly made you actually feel like there was humanity in these superhumans. They are allowed to screw up or be full of themselves. But, yeah, can you imagine? I sat there and thought about what it's got to be for Powers Division. Yeah. You've got to fill out... 
your shots fired forms. Yeah, that's going to be a standard for a mm-hmm. cop. But can you write down in in triplicate why three blocks just w- was engulfed in green flame? Why there happens to be a demonic entity over you know in, in the region of the parks? And it just it seemed crazier and crazier. I love how it's all based in L.A. too, because you're going. You know, if a town that has enough problems, L.A. is definitely one to start with. <laughs> now add supers into it. And you've just made it that much more interesting. That use of uh, that use of force report. Uh, Detective Johnson's belt was transformed into a large snake that then proceeded to try to choke him to death. I therefore had to uh, subdue it, <laughs> pull my weapon, and fire six shots into the mass of uh, the snake, which turned back into Detective Johnson's belt. I know. When you think about that, and think about all the cannibalized and, 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 and uh, reconstituted uh, machinery they had. Mm-hmm. They had freeze weapons, flamethrowers, energy weapons. And I'm just sitting there going, I hope you have put together a very clear and concise <laughs> manual for all of these. Or this is going to end very badly. Detective Johnson's now got feeling back in his leg after the cryo gun <laughs> incident. <laughs> We ran him to emergency hospital as we dipped him in a hot bath, and he's, he's taking it easy for the next week. Thank you very much, Detective Johnson, for coming here uh, before this uh, uh, Internal it. Affairs uh, Bureau Investigative Committee. Oh, God, yeah, I didn't even think about IA's it's, involvement. It's been our understanding that you utilized a cryon gun without going through the appropriate cryon gun uh, user's training program. Is this correct? It was two weeks I didn't have time for. I was backlogged about 20 cases. But yeah, I know. It was just one of those aspects I thought was hilarious because... Is that where you got the... Uh, is that where you got the um, the hard bit uh, police cop going, I'm sorry I didn't have time to take your training course. I had to pick up a gun and save 9 million human lives. Oh, that gets a little too dirty here. Oh, yeah, we're out about the right of that little girl. <laughs> I know, you have to love some of those gags, and a lot mm-hmm. of those tropes have been included over the years. Wait a minute, does that mean that, Johnson, you're off the force. Turn your badge and your crown gun. <laughs> K-clunk! Kennedy, get your ass in here! You call this a report? What about that five blocks that blew up in green flame? That, the chief's got my ass chewed! I yeah, think I we've probably that run that joke into the ground at this oh, yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, yeah. I don't think there's a single Johnson in there, which that yeah, could be very disappointing. No Johnsons in that police force. Not a one. I got you. I know it's kind of limp. Uh, so rump, what bum, might say. Well, okay. So, All right, uh, but do you have the balls to keep talking about this story? Oh, might as well. All right. I'll rise to occasion. Stiff upper lip and all that. No, I got nothing. Yeah, Let's I, go on. <laughs> I heard that about you. Hey <laughs> Okay, so uh, but yeah, no, we were talking about now you wanted to talk about films that are completely separate from that. And you didn't want to bog down with like dread or, or, or barbed wire or whatnot and make us, you know, completely antiquated. I mean, technically dread is uh well no, dread's a dark horse. I'm sorry. I was um, thinking of Lobo well, originally. It wasn't originally uh, distributed from the UK produ- uh, uh, printing press. I'm trying to remember the name of that now, and it's totally escaped me yet again. It goes back as uh, far back as eighty seven. But uh, yeah, and they've they've kind of been bounced all over. I mean DC has picked them up. What? Judge Dredd has been around that long. I thought it came out back when Sylvester Stallone did that movie. Yeah, and then they God. spun a comic why? book off why of it, Why would you right? do that? Why? Why would you ever remind me of that horrible, <laughs> horrible, flaccid film? Which is really weird considering how much talent was involved in that film. And it was still a fucking dud. But, you know. Actually, uh, due to the power of internet, uh-huh. we know that Judge Dredd started out in a uh, weekly anthology magazine called 2000 AD. Oh, yes. In yeah. 1977, Holy no less. Christ, is it really that far back? It oh, has God. A I was British, just a boy. You were right, though. It was a British sci-fi mag. Yeah. Hmm. 2000 AD. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Published by IPC Media. Yeah, damn. I totally forgot that. Then again, I came on to that, uh, the advertisement of those magazines quite a while later. But yeah, no, I mean, all right, in your opinion, 
what is a film that feels definitively superhero, but away from your mainstream DC and Marvel and even, you know, even Dark Horse by definition? Well, there's the thing. I really didn't find too many truly superhero okay. movies out there. Most so of like your vigilante. Yeah, most of your non uh, big three uh, mm-hmm. comic to film productions have all been uh, non standard. About the only one I found that was closest to the quote unquote superhero genre yeah. uh, was the Umbrella Academy. The Umbrella... You know, okay, you're going to have to walk me through this. Uh, Dark Horse Comics released The Umbrella Academy uh, is a comic book series written by Gerard Way, uh, the once lead singer of the band My Chemical Romance. (laughs) And illustrated by Gabriel Ba. It was... uh, It was a limited limited series run. Okay. Uh, So six issues. In the first book. That is very limited. Which was Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite. It was released in 2007. Okay. And then again in February of 2008. It actually won the 2008 Eisner's Award for Best Finite Series and Limited Series. Which was then followed by, by Umbrella Academy Dallas in 2008. Uh, there's a... There is actually a proposed next edition that's supposed to be coming out, uh, but it's still in development. Uh, Gerard Way uh, apparently makes statements about he'll release the next book in the series when making comics feels right. Oh, Lord. Loosely translate, we can't get anyone to step up and actually produce this. No. The the television adaption of it, uh, which in this case... Uh, this is going to be a television adaptation, a series, as opposed to right. uh, an actual movie. Uh, started development in 2015, and it'll actually finally be released on Netflix in February of 2019, this year. February 15th, this year. That's awesome. I kind of felt like maybe we should focus on uh, new and emerging comic books instead of, you know... Falling way, way, wow. way back to, you know, old comics like no, Powers. The fine old comics. <laughs> uh, ones that you read, old man. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but so anyway. point out he's a year older <laughs> than me. Yeah, seriously. All right. There's him, and then there's Dirt, and then there's... You know. Anyhow. Age jokes on old Rufus aside. Uh, the <laughs> Umbrella Academy. It initially takes place in an alternate history, uh, as most comics do, since, yep. you know... So where uh, exactly is the pivotal point where it splinters off from this existence? Uh, Where John F. Kennedy doesn't die. Well, I kind of like that. He was never assassinated. And uh, the beginning of the comics primarily set in uh, 1977, which is set as the present for this comic series. Okay. So the uh, title title group, the Umbrella Academy, is actually this quote-unquote family of adopted kids. Uh, all kind of a dis- dysfunctional family of superheroes, a la <laughs> the original Fantastic Four sort of setup. We're all together! Yeah. What, no X-Men vibe there? Uh, it was a, there was a weird cosmic event that caused some 43 super-powered infants to be inexpensive inexplicably born right from women that suddenly became miraculously pregnant so a cosmic event accrues mm-hmm. and creates a alumni of the first bastion of super beings simply because yeah and then you've mm-hmm. got this character uh, sir reginald hargreaves uh, <laughs> with the uh with the moniker of the monocle who's actually an extraterrestrial being disguised as a famous entrepreneur. Of course he is. Who goes around and he adopts seven of these kids that survived. Tell me, by any chance... um, And teaches them to save the world. Okay, by any chance is he bright green and uh, has a flowing cape and a bit of a beer belly? No, no. Actually, he looks a little more like uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen's... um, Oh, shoot, the guy from Africa... Apple, uh, you mean uh, Alan Quartermain? Thank you, yes. Okay. 
That's the one. Share your shares more of Sean Connery. Yeah. So yeah, we'll continue doing that voice whenever I damn well feel like it. Essentially, what he does is he assembles these seven kids and he turns them into superheroes. Yeah, of course. Highly publicized. They go about their little kids saving the world with superpowers. Yeah. Uh, and of course, they all behind the scenes have developed all manner of uh, of uh, bad habits and quirks. <laughs> You know, I, I'm doing heroin. They've got all this. Damn it, Speedy. How did I not see this coming? You He's a snowbird, man. <laughs> I know. We got, how can you not have fun with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Explain how this happened. My ward Speedy's a junkie. <laughs> I love how the 70s went really dark oh, with yeah. that shit. I mean, think about it. You got Starks and alcohol, a raging mm-hmm. alcoholic no. in a mechanized battle suit. Well, shit faced. Yeah, and nobody thought that could possibly get dark. <laughs> like, really? How could that go wrong? Oh, well, I can't imagine. Yeah, you don't want an alcoholic behind the wheel of a car. Now give them repulsors. Well, in all fairness, the people making those decisions all fairness to who? Alcoholics or or uh, guys in mechanized suits? To, to the fact that they let him run around like that. The people making those decisions, they grew up in the 1950s, and they're uh-huh. like, "Well, yeah, my dad had five highballs, and then he drove to work." You and know, he landed six sales. He went to the strip club. He had sex with five hookers, did a little blow, and came home to my mom. Smoked two Cuban cigars, <laughs> pooned, the mom, uh, pooned my mom in the ass, and then went to bed. And by God, he got up first thing in the morning, showered, shaved, shit, went right to work. Sure, he smacked me around a little bit, but that's just because I was ornery. Besides, all I was doing was dulling down his monkey wrench, you know, with my chin. <laughs> Jesus so what if a guy in a mechanized battle suit wants to have a few whiskeys and then go back, go out and stop the commies? Run I say more power on. to it. Run rambling on. Pro sodomy, <laughs> pro child abuse. Oh, this is going to go well. Or pro commies. Pro commies, yes, exactly. <laughs> pro capitalism. <laughs> pro war profiteering. <laughs> pro war profiteering. Thank you, Marvel. Oh, man. So, yeah. The as, military industrial uh, complex. So what is it? As they all hit about teenage level, they all end up being completely fed up with each other and go their separate ways. You're saying it was a teenage wasteland? It was, yes. (laughs) The comic actually starts with them all coming back together again, being reunited after for, all these years. For Hargreaves' funeral. The alien entrepreneur that guy really dies. Didn't die. Yeah. And this was the only way to get back. He pulled a Phil Coulson. Shame on him. Still, does it sound creepier than a bald old man that has a you know, a school miles away from upper state New York, also while having a gaggle, a murder mm. of these gorgeous children? all in spitting distance from each other. No one has any locked doors. There is no curfew. And they could just be, you know, elbow deep in each other. And that's never an issue in the, in the comics. Well, they talked about it a little bit with uh, Scott Summers and Jean Grey. No, they really Elbow didn't. deep. Well, yeah. No, I think, actually, who was it that took up writing one of the X-Men titles in the... Oh, what was it? The not the Age of Apocalypse series. What was the quote unquote event that came after that where uh Professor X and uh oh, Magneto uh, commingled into exta- Oh uh, Onslaught. Yes, the Onslaught event. Uh who you also made the comment how much fucking they, toilets and, and, and sinks can H- Hank McCoy you know clog. Oh no. Right? I'm sorry, the, the dude's gotta have to shed like mad. Can you imagine what he's like in the summer? Is it this like is It was somebody Wade. Oh, oh, Mark Wade. Mark Wade, thank you. Yeah. I uh, took over writing one of the X-Men titles during that time period and commented how he always felt Professor X wasn't portrayed dark enough. Well, Onslaught did a good job with yeah, that. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, here's a man who's got an agenda and he takes little wow, kids. Oh, my man! He takes little kids he brings them into the special school special and he home. indoctrines them to perpetuate his agenda. Mm, yeah, yeah. Curl, coupled with the fact that he has he teaches also them. reversed engineered alien technology used in training combat scenarios. So mm-hmm. he's basically making this 
elaborate paramilitary unit on yeah, top of exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, he's not running a school where these kids come and they just learn, you know, Chaucer and geometry. Mm-hmm. No, they have regular sessions in the danger room. Which means all those kids must have like zero body fat. Yeah. <laughs> They and do. Have at least added at least about oh, 40 pounds of muscle. So you're way. saying that's the one comic where they have realistic builds for what they oh, do. Oh, God, no. Not even close. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I always love that. Like, oh, the, the world doesn't understand so. us. We're constantly uh, outed and thrown rock shit. It's like, and yet you're all built and you're all pretty. And mm-hmm. have you seen half of your female clientele there? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I meant comrades. So what you're saying is not only does Professor X work them to the point that they have zero body fat mm-hmm. and Adonis-like builds, he then also pays to send all the girls to have, you know, augmentations. Well, you know, the saddest part being it is a Since they all have the exact same bus size. Yeah, and it really varies on the artist, but even John Byron made a comment, too. We're just mm-hmm. like, I really think I made him a little too busty, but it was what was asked of me. I'm like, well, yeah. Good job with that. You have corrupted young minds, and now we're fucked up men. Good job. <laughs> oh, what do we got? But yeah, no. Uh, well, I mean, I enjoyed... I do enjoy the the the, uh, the various pantheons that are being put out, the, the various teams and whatnot. And that was the main reason why it took me forever to find that damn flick. And I, seriously, I mean, this thing came out in 2016. Three years lapsed before I actually found it. Yeah, I had to finally just go on Amazon and and rent it, just get the English dub version because well for some reason we couldn't get a subtitled one. Yeah, that pissed me off. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no one of you have a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> neither, neither do I. What did you find? <laughs> okay, uh, this is direct reference to a Russian superhero team. And immediately oh. when I started with it, I started laughing. I'm going, oh, this can't be. You're talking thing. about the Avengers. Well, I'm talking about their version of the Avengers. Yeah. Well, the Guardians. You know why it took so long to find that? Mm. Even Amazon didn't have it available for U.S. Mm. acquisition. It was even just, I want to say, three months ago I went looking for it. Only uh, okay. available if you bought the Amazon Russian box. Yeah. You had to get the Russia subscription to Amazon. <laughs> Fuck that. And it only just recently dropped. Thank God, now I can get all the kimchi I ever wanted <laughs> at such reasonable cost. No, uh, what I thought was fascinating, but and again, the English dub obviously has its issues with translation yes. and uh, some stipulations. But again, it's kind of that standard issue. We throw in a group of loners together. Mm-hmm. They eventually find a cause. They unite and they save the day. Okay, oh. we're used to that. Did the... Uh, did their version of Coulson die? Uh, no, thankfully, that was a skip. No, everyone was the same staple. They were all made from the same project. Oh, okay. So our storyline establishes this is during the Cold War. They were all winter soldiers. So for all ages, for ages 20 and up, mm-hmm. we're neck and neck and spies. Rambo's dropping his balls in you know Russian uh, spaces, and there's more than 180 megaton warheads. They can easily cook the planet to a nice even simmer, mm-hmm. and somewhere in their space race. But uh, basically, it opens up with a, a, your, your stock footage of the Cold War era, unleashing spy planes, JFK giving a stirring speech, First Secretary uh, Nishua Khrushchev, who is ready to bang a shoe during a UN meeting. All the while, you hear this amazing vocalist that has just got this just almost uh, Enya-like quality, yep. warmth to her voice. And then you see this footage of medical charts, graphs, graphics, and early 60s tech mm-hmm. all being implemented as several people seem to be worked on, altered, or reconfigured. Now, whether it's genetic manipulation... Mutations from possibly Chernobyl, 80s, uh-huh. and uh, just uh, various uh, chemical indoctrination. All these beings have been made. They have all been created one fast another. In fact, one of the scientists in question mm-hmm. starts augmenting himself. Because that happens. Well, exactly. I mean, I, I'm just opening the sequence. You see these kick-ass uh, mecha tank units mm-hmm. roaming around. And they're taking on, like, uh, T-34 and T-70 tanks. Like, it's nothing. And it's like a T-1000 moment where they just start turning the contents of those tanks, which have men in them, into chunky salsa. It's just, it, My part was a little grotesque, and you're going, okay, well, that's just nasty. 
And uh, the guy that steals it apparently has the ability to take over technology. And uh, he kind of looks like a weird hybrid of Bane and Whiplash. So, uh, you know, Mickey Rourke, Tommy, uh, Tom Hardy, pick, take a fucking pick. Either yeah. Way. And seeing that this isn't Marvel, there's no Winter Guard to save them. So we have an organization called Patriot. Yes, I know. Very similar to S.H.I.E.L.D. Wink, wink. They get the news. They debrief all the agents. They start explaining these experiments go far back as the late 50s. Recon- uh, recombining DNA. Cybernetics in its infancy. Genetic manipulation. All these facets have become together. And uh, the main doctor in question was working on a project called Module 1. Mm-hmm. Allowing him to dominate any device... With an engine running in it. Oh, wow. So, think about any technological aspect. And, of course, you think about it, we're biochemical inter- uh, batteries to yeah. begin with. So, this shouldn't really be an issue. So, yeah, not con- uh, Colonel Fury. Uh, sounds off a bit of exposition. <laughs> Takes a massive exposition plot dump. Mm-hmm. And establishing, almost identical to the formula of, of, of Furious reinitializing the Avengers yeah. initiative. And uh, that being said, no aliens, no Asgardians, no old timey frozen guys. So yeah, no, you just got to move on. Who's the main uh, antagonist of that? Oh, uh, the main antagonist is known as Krutov. 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 I know it sounds too close to Kruton, but yes. hey. he has superhuman strength, stamina, a, a series of mass, and again, he has this module one that allows him to take over technology. He and the steals ability. these tank mecha units uh-huh. for himself and just walks off with it. Well, you know, I don't blame him. I mean, I honestly thought, uh, really, did, you know, Dr. Erskine not slip himself just a little bit of super soldier oh, yeah, serum? Easily. Just shooting up in the bathroom with yeah, it. Yeah, one of them between the toes. Just, yeah. like, this is kind of fact. By the way, I see <laughs> so, uh, my your wife, main... My wife loves my performance now. Well, yeah, your main... Uh, uh, woman in charge in this sense, uh, Major uh, Lorena, she has basically... Not Maria, on a tough? She is basically Maria Hill and has been given the less than desirable task to reassemble this team of beings and specifically are capable to creating this same level of terror. I really thought it was going to turn out to be on a top. Yeah, no, no. That's cliche and silly and very Bond-like. <laughs> but she has to assemble it in like two weeks. Yes. So that means prep them, outfit them, and equip all these beings for this fight that they may or may not have really been working their powers. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, for anyone that actually still has a problem with this, I submit to you this very cool thing. A werebear with a minigun! Do we have to go any further? I think this kind of covers it. Maybe just a tad further. Okay, if you want One of them is a werebear? He is not only a werebear in the sense that he can actually shift from man to a full foot bear. Mm-hmm. The guy is about 6'2 in human form and an 8 foot high werebear and roughly the size of all those Ursus. Okay. Uh, or Ur- Erskine? Or Erskine. Ur- 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 yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, yeah, those things are fucking enormous bears. Mm-hmm. You look at this going. Is that, so that's no wonder why they call it Ursa Major. Holy God. So he can shift back and forth through that stable. Uh, you have another guy who's a geokinetic. Yes. That means he can move the earth. Ooh. Like Superman? Yes, like Superman. If he, Only with his freaking mind. He moves it backwards enough time, rolls backwards. No, no, nobody's spinning that little earth. Oh, he can okay. control and manipulate certain segments of oh, dirt. Oh, gotcha. And create He this. throws rocks. Rather substantial boulders, yeah. actually, would be a little more accurate. Uh, we, have then, a, uh, we have a woman who's a ballet they're kind of an aqua ballet performer, but she's uh, basically decent in hand-to-hand combatants. She has this ability to manipulate water, and she can turn invisible. So I'm just sort of like, okay, that one's a little different. And again, all they these They random rolled that character, didn't they? Yeah, oh, I know. It feels exactly <laughs> like those Marvel charts. But what's so funny is they're roughly 40 years older than they actually physically appear. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, by all this point, that should put them roughly about 90 to about 110. But All again, sustained by their scientific... By their powers, yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, I know. Of course, uh, the, the particular old chestnut they were using, Kurtov is using to, uh, his clone army to take over the world. Hmm. Yeah, I know. You just want to cue the John Williams music right there. It's like, get the orchestra. There you go. Right. <laughs> but of course. Now, I have to give credit where credit's due. Now, this thing is all running on about a $5 million budget. Mm-hmm. So that is CGI work, wire work, Slow mo cab speeds, 
fight choreography, hmm. gun fu, if you will. Oh no! Some of you John Wu fans there. Hmm. It's a damn sight impressive, and personally, I kind of hope it gets a sequel. Oh sure, yeah. Sure. I mean, there's a fair degree of tropes that we've seen to death, but God damn it, a wear bear with a minigun! I can't sense to see that's enough. <laughs> the fact that this team of misfits. Have again, they, we have that standard uh, foundation of they argue a bit, they join forces, they tackle the main mm-hmm. antagonist, and they do have a fair degree of problems in their way. But yeah, you, we have a speedster with a set of just these wicked, almost monofilament level blades. Oh, okay. And he's just moving like a whirling dervish. It's mm-hmm. just terrifying. I'm going, you know, he, he'd be a great thresher for corn. And you know, for these folks that just want to shit on, I want, hey, give it a view first. Yeah. Before you start snap judging, actually give it a watch. Watch it with the subtitles versus the uh, the dubbing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would prefer it with the subtitles, but good yeah. luck finding it. Like you stated, it was six months before they even got it sent over to Amazon Prime. Now, yeah. I myself went on to Amazon. It was three bucks to rent for two days. So you know, again, primarily you know, the Prime folks, they can watch it for free. Yeah. So yeah, I just didn't have Amazon Prime at the time. Not that this is a plug for Amazon Prime. If you want to watch a series of things, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how would you even plug that one to Amazon Prime? Gosh, God, gee, well, I guess if only I had something to watch. <laughs> You're cute. Moving on. Yeah. But yeah, I know. It was just one of those aspects that, um, again, we have seen this. The funniest thing, though, is you're looking at Moscow going, is there anything left to save? You kind of crashed it all. <laughs> oh, so just like the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, pretty much that same level, like $600 million <laughs> worth of damage to the, you know, just central Manhattan. And, yeah, that's going to need a shitload of new windows. Gee, doors. thanks, Iron Man and friends. I'm glad you were able to save the burrows. Yeah, it was so thoughtful of you to not move the fight. See, oh, I don't know, by the Hudson. Over the river, over Anything. the water. Yeah. Near Jersey, something. <laughs> I know, I just thought that was hilarious, too. You're just like, yeah, nothing. There's a whole ocean over that way. <laughs> yeah, at any point in time, we can actually do a salvage gig. Yeah. Look at all this weird alien tech. It's all techno-organic. It'll be fine. So, definitely a thumbs up on the Guardians. I, I liked it. Not to be mistaken for uh, Rise of the Guardians. Or, or Guardians Age of, of the, the Galaxy. Gar- or Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, no green guys. That's yeah. uh, really disturbing issues with their father and their sexual orientation. Yeah. That was really disturbing. But given the sheer sigh of Dave Batista, yeah. I wouldn't have interrupted him. And not Rise of the Guardians either, where you have a Russian-speaking Santa Claus wielding swords. Oh, that'd be silly. <laughs> or Legacy of the Guardians with talking owls. You know way too many Guardians. <laughs> I know all what? the Guardians. You're not going to tell me about the blue little blue guys <laughs> and the androgynously dressed in little red dresses? <laughs> yeah, take this ray. What will I do with it? Watch your mask. <laughs> and that was Kyle Rayner's introduction. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Have fun, guys. <laughs> I just love that part, though, for Green Lantern. Like, One, punch. One punch! One uh, punch! Nobody liked Oh, wait, Gardner. that was a different uh, Green Lantern. Nobody liked uh, Gardner. <laughs> yeah, I know. Which, of course, on a note of, uh, of Russian science, it Indeed. takes us back a little ways into back the... Back to the front. Cold War era and the time of uh, spies. I sense plugging. Whatever are you referencing, Sean? Well, I'm talking about uh, that comic. Well, actually, a web comic produced by by Santos called Polar. Uh, now, that's not Santos, the masked Marvel, right? Because th- th- there is that is that um, uh, Mexican wrestler. Also known as Santos, the Silver Mask. No. No, definitely not to be mistaken. Okay. No, this is, he's also produced. Oh, I'm trying to think of some of the other uh, the other comics characters. he's been involved in. Uh, Polar was actually a side project he did to uh, uh, well, experiment funded. with storytelling and uh, and a minimalist uh, graphic style. Uh, anybody that takes a look at Polar on on its webpage mm-hmm. will notice that. Quick, plug um, their webpage. You know, I actually don't remember what it is. <laughs> Look you up Polar. Failed this Look podcast. up Polar, people. I can't do everything for you. I'm not here to hold your fucking hand. <laughs> Use Google. Tickle my balls. I don't understand. <laughs> this is not a plug for Google. Um, if you need to find shit. 
But no, Polar is a story about an international hitman by the name of Kaiser Black, ah. who the character actually originated in another comic that Santos did. Uh, if you go and you take a look at the webcomic, you'll notice that it's very stylized. I It's all rendered in just blacks, whites, and reds. Okay. That's so, it. So not influenced by, like, say, Gogol 13. <laughs> Actually, a lot influenced by uh, manga mm-hmm. by manga noir of the eighties and nineties. Yeah, baby. As well as uh, novels of the same type. I pays attention. You would describe the story as bleak. Okay. Uh, you got femme fatale characters. You got a lot of gore and violence, Ooh, my. and it's all set in an icy landscape. You start out uh, pretty much immediately with the character is. In retirement, clearly. In a cabin in the middle of nowhere. I have given up war. It is no longer my mistress. And then he has to commit to war again. When he's attacked by a gang of killers for almost no apparent reason. And they killed fact, his dog. In and fact, they raped one, his monkey. <laughs> kicked his dog. John Wick style. <laughs> oh, jeez. But, no, he... You'll actually have to infer a lot from this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Santos actually did the entire webcomic with no dialogue. Well, that's kind of awesome. Primarily because he didn't want to waste time translating his Spanish to English. I like it. You know, he could have gone with a local national setup, too. But, you know, hey, I appreciate where he's coming from, though. Kind of less is more. So, now, did he drop this to Dark Horse, then? Because I, I remember they're publishing something similar to this, but I don't remember if it. I mean, it was supposed to be like 2012, I want to say, but I might be wrong. Dark Horse picked picked up the webcomic and bought the rights to publish it as a series of okay. graphic novels. But overall, this is a continuing uh, webcomic. That's correct. Okay. All right. I just now, make recently. Sure I'm not talking out of my ass for a yeah, No, no, you're absolutely right. And now, recently, picked up with a second webcomic that he started called Guts. Huh. So now is he doing uh, the illustration himself, or have they uh, found someone? Or has he found someone to work with, or who's? No, he still does all of the illustration himself, and still the web comic persists in a non dialogue format. Even yes. though when Dark Horse uh, published the the web comic as a series of graphic novels, they actually added dialogue to the yeah. web comic and kind of dull. and speech and thought bubbles. Well, even Santos himself admitted that. Later on, as the story took on in an investigative uh, scenario, it became harder to tell the story without dialogue. Well, okay, I mean, that's fair enough, but even still, you kind of get the gist of it if you're paying attention to how right. it's unfolding. Well, and he had to... the storyboard perspective. Exactly. Well, I mean, he had to depict conversations usually using solely gestures, facial expressions... And you keep flipping me off! ...imagery. I don't understand that! <laughs> I mean, at a certain point, you're you're kind of hoping that the reader is getting the gist of the story. Yeah. And they're not doing too much interpretation. See, this is why we can't do a comic book. Yeah. No, I mean, it would just be really long-winded. <laughs> that's true. Much like our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the main reason why I'm, I'm thinking that. The most interesting part, actually, is the story is improvised as it came out. That is kind of awesome, though. Well, I don't know. I was kind of thinking about hitting the way back machine, but you know, I feel like we might lose some of the younger audience. There. <laughs> well, at least it, I didn't use the term "time tunnel." What I recommend, though, is in hearing about this comic, then you go take a look at the upcoming. Again, this is not a plug for Netflix, but Netflix again <laughs> is going to be bringing this to film. The on January twenty fifth, two thousand and nineteen. This will oh actually my. be this will actually be a film, not a series. And the titular character of Polar is going to be played by none other than Mads Mikkelsen, uh, which folks will remember from Very the nice. um, Hannibal television series, or some of those who actually sat through. Oh, I don't know, maybe at least one Bond film. <laughs> No. With the infamous ball slapping scene. You'll never forget it. <laughs> You'll never get it out of your head. God. Swing that rope. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm not even sitting in that chair. And I'm going, I, I don't want to be here. 
There are two reasons that no that somebody doesn't forget that episode. One, they have balls because you have balls. Two, because you enjoyed seeing Daniel Craig naked. No, I really didn't. But don't no, I give him credit. But you had yeah, balls. Great shit. So that's why you would you remember it either because you had balls mm-hmm. and it made you cringe, or you don't have balls and you saw Daniel Craig naked. Okay. That's there are enough. some there are some people on that Venn diagram that cross Probably over. Have balls. Yeah. 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 That's possible. <laughs> Well, I, I would, the reason why I use the term way back or uh, Mr. Peabody or, mm-hmm. or, oh, I suppose I could say that big blue box. Oh, no, no, that's fine. You go ahead and you talk about your yes, title. Sir, I guess I'm done it. talking about it. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> God, just hammering up. Let's see how long you went into it. Jesus, 30 minutes. Oh, my God. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, the reason why I bring it up yes. is, uh, well, I, okay, case in point, I was looking into my archives and just seeing how much shit I had done. Mm-hmm. And I realized that, I actually wrote this up for ePinions back in the day, but never actually published it in my own blog. Shocking. I know. Imagine. What is it? Uh, actually, <laughs> oddly enough, the uh, Rocketeer. A Disney oh, product. Yes. Uh, case in point, originally crafted by Dave Stevens back in 1982. They had bought the rights for it in 1985, and it took clear into 1991 before it actually started taking off. Gee, Mr. Peabody, is this back before special effects were invented? Right, you. <laughs> well, we are still dealing with those antiquated notions as blue screen and practical effects and actual flight and stunt effects. <laughs> you know, those pussy days. What, those were real airplanes? I know, it's so crazy, it just might work. You know, back when stuntmen earned a fucking living. <laughs> There's a reason why they got danger money, baby, because they were into it. No, it was kind of funny. Initially, it was stylized. Uh, Dave Stevens kind of took a pulp comic kind of feel to it, mm-hmm. creating somewhere yeah. on the lines of uh, a, a design of the costume is kind of reminiscent of the old serials Commander Cody. So, it, or it just looked like he was, had a pumpkin on his head and he was flying around <laughs> with a jetpack. Yeah. But he had developed a spy buster, and um, I guess a better term would be a crime fighter. And again, this man has no abilities outside of having a jetpack on his back and being a pilot. That's it's, true. He didn't even it was fix just a stunt man. He didn't even fix the jetpack, did he? No, no. That all no. fell under the category of his uh, uh, his buddy. Uh, uh, what was cruelly named Peavy. <laughs> yes, the venerable character actor Alan Arkin gets called Peavy. I guess he was a real woofer. Who oh, knows? Yeah, yeah. Mm, speaker jokes. But they're on bum bum. Yeah, these aren't dated at all. Deep down, audiophiles are having a blast. They like their nerd shit. But no, um, all intents purposes, what you have here is considered a highly financial flop. Yeah. And it's inherently fucked up, in my opinion, because you got a decent cast. You have a nice simplistic storyline where basically we got a do-gooder that hides his identity to protect his loved ones, fights mobs, and the fucking Nazis. I mean, come on! That's some decent... The biggest problem is they didn't plug it worth a damn. And romances have... Jennifer Connelly. Let's not well, forget who that. who wouldn't want to romance Jennifer Con- I will do that now. <laughs> that will be no problem. Does she need, does she need a, a sugar baby? You know, I'll, I'll gladly you know, participate. But no, no, think about it. you got everything from the FBI chasing down these Nazi saboteurs. Yep. You have this rocket pack that got snuck on the very airfield that both Cliff and mm, PV worked Wait at. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. Do tell. So after all that time fighting the communists, Timothy Dalton turned around and worked with the Nazis? Not the only worked with them. It was fun. Yeah, for it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I kind see of a, nothing. Oh, I know. Yes, we gave away a 27-year-old uh, <laughs> spoiler there. I'm sure they're not going to lose their shit. But no, it's absolutely it's, well, it's funny. So you got all these physical effects. You have practical effects score. I still cannot find the name of the dude that played Luthor. That gargantuan, seven-foot-tall motherfucker that uh, was uh, rocking the twin 45s. We should also mention this is not a plug for Timothy Dalton. Oh, yeah, this is true because I... I you know, I've done a few of his uh, movies for reviews, but, mm-hmm. you know, he never wrote me back. No. Well done, Spawn. <laughs> no, think of that. Not once. Well, you know, he's got a Brooklyn accent in real oh, life. Oh, uh, naturally, yeah. naturally. I mean, the biggest problem is, I think, even though it's a PG-13 rating, it got a real lukewarm vibe from the critics due to the lack of, 
there really was no explanation that this is basically a spybuster movie. There is not enough publicity. I mean, you had it did not get posters. a lot of. Yeah. You saw the posters. They didn't tell you, Dick. You see him flying off in an arcway. You see uh, speed lines moving by, and it doesn't explain a damn thing. This guy decked out in a leather jacket, jetpack, and a metal helm, and they don't explain a damn thing about him. Now, and now, that being said, this was a $35 million budget in 1991. Yep. It made over $47 million in the box office, so that's a $12 million profit, and they still sneered at it. Like, oh, well, the potential for sequels are just not going to happen. Now, I understand that there were some anachronisms. Mm-hmm. They had a few issues, and I noticed a couple. I'm going, yeah, that firearm didn't come out. I mean, it was being made in 1938, but it wasn't in production until 1940. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the Walter P-38. Murr, murr. And the MP40 uh, submachine gun was designed in 1938, but it wasn't widely used until 1941. Okay, I just thought those were fun facts. A lot of these people were just shitting on it. Going, well, they didn't have the Deutschmarks yet, and they haven't been implemented. I'm going, oh, okay, uh, yeah, a minor goof. It's a simple line. Do an edit. Just edit the Deutschmark slide out or change it up. <laughs> Maybe have them pay you in gold. Interestingly enough, you know, the funniest thing about this is, is, unlike many of these where, you know, the comic that they were based on and had been around for a while, yeah. uh, with the exception of the Guardians, of course, which yeah, had no weird. comic it was based on. Uh, do you know Rocketeer actually only made his first appearance in 1982 yeah. in comics? Yeah, I it was kind of funny. And then later on in about uh, early 90s, it actually started taking off again. Oh, yeah. Primarily, because well, of... Now, the biggest aspect is the Dave movie Stevens in 91 really didn't do an exorbitant amount other than what he worked on for a one shot deal for the Disney release and well, mm-hmm. technically Disney slash touchdown. Yeah. And then IDW ages later, like in 2011, starts tackling it. I mean, you've got this gorgeous cover from Alex Ross. Yeah. And as you may have noted, that man cannot falter when it comes to paintwork. <laughs> Of course, this is only after poor uh, Dave Stevens has died. And you're going, wow, you fuckers took a while. Right. But at the end of the day, what you have here is a guy who is basically just a pilot, um, an average hand-to-hand combatant. I don't even think he's that good with a firearm. At the end of the day, this guy just is running off of guts and a frickin' jetpack. That's what I kind of thought was funny. I'm like, well, he's certainly athletic, but... Outside of normal calisthenics, you wouldn't see him and look at him going, oh yeah, clearly he's put on the proper weight and he's had combat training. There's no way shape or... Yeah, let's yeah, face it, Hawkeye could it. kick his ass. <laughs> All right, sorry, let me scratch that. I mean, Jeremy Brenner could kick his ass. What about... Uh, oh, crud, what's his name? Uh, the guy that's been... a The Incredible Hulk's uh, buddy. Back in the original... You mean Rick Jones? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, anyone could Rick kick Rick Jones his ass. could kick his ass? Well, he has been cosmically imbued a few times. This is true. So that would be kind of a cheat. What comic was that? And Captain America sure did teach him how to throw a punch. I was reading some comic recently where... It's... Jesus, when you think about it, Captain America has outfitted how many Avengers with how many different martial arts oh, yeah. uh, um, forms and, 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 and disciplines. Some comic I was recently had a superhero talking to Rick Jones and saying, "Your superhero, your 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 superpower is your contact book." Yeah, yeah, because it really is. He's known everybody in the industry. Well, let's see, most of the Avengers, most of the Defenders, yeah, quite a few of the X Men, Champions. Yeah, yeah. was okay, was he I ever agree. a member of the Teen Brigade? Oh god. <laughs> yeah. You know, the 60s because, were really painful. Yeah, because, you know, writing. superheroes can't do their job without the help of underage ham radio enthusiasts. You know, that part was so funny. Like, I'm going to get the team brigade together, and we're going to try to find out and isolate. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're going to fuck around on a ham radio because you're, like, 14 and you're a little dick. <laughs> but no, uh, Cap- <laughs> Mr. Fantastic would be like, we probably better involve the teen brigade in this. Oh, my God. <laughs> 60s, what was with child endangerment? I mean, you can take this as far oh, back sorry. as... Oh, Johnny Quest. Yeah. Don't look back, boys. There's nothing we can do. As these men are being <laughs> shut and devoured by crocodiles. 
in putting their kid, you know, his son and his stolen Indian child. Yes. That's right. I don't recall any money exchanging hands. I don't recall adoption <laughs> form changing hands. This is a creepy old white guy that hangs out with a really buff white guy and has a creepy little Aryan blown haired blue eyed child. And they want their own little Indian boy for what? A constant companion for little Johnny? Or maybe someone just to clean his shoes? I because don't know. something happened to Mrs. Quest and nobody talks about it. Ever. <laughs> so that means Johnny Quest must have been a Disney title. Oh, yeah. He's like a Disney princess. He really His is. mom's dead. He really is. When you break it down. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sitting there going, this kid has got to be the most hardened motherfucker when you think about it. Think of all those deaths he has seen or indirectly or directly caused himself. Directly caused. Yes. Right? This kid's got to be seasoned veteran. I'm like, shit does not bother him. I'm, I'm trying to envision him like in mid 30s. Just something blows up behind him. He doesn't even glance at it. Just keeps walking. You don't have to envision it. You just have to watch Venture Brothers. Is this a plug for Venture Brothers, Sean? This is not a plug for Venture Brothers. Okay. But go watch Venture Brothers. It's hilarious. <laughs> you know, let's see like certain characters. They and speaking of hilarious, that takes us to our much more lighthearted topic. Oh, my. Uh, which would be... Archie Comics, Burning Sabrina out. the Teenage Witch. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. It's still it's still marginally Burn in Hell. <sighs> this is true. At least it wasn't Riverdale. <laughs> because Sabrina the Teenage Witch, originating from comics back in 1962, that is uh, when she appeared in Archie's Madhouse number 22. Now you're not going to be referenced the Melissa Joan Hart series right this is actually the current series this is Netflix. actually yes so we're oh, going Christ. from uh the original comic in which sabrina was a quote-unquote half witch sorry being you know her mother being ordinary or mortal uh being living with her two aunts hilda mm-hmm. and zelda and how's her friend bob yeah. is he good He's good. No? He's actually not bad. And kind of course, hedonistic perv. And, you know, actually, if you ever saw the Sabrina, the Teenage Witch TV series with um, Melissa Joan Hart, this is not a plug for Melissa Joan Hart. Thank Christ. They'll go watch Clarissa Explains It All. It's hilarious. That's not um, Melissa Joan Hart. <laughs> that was Melissa was Joan Hart. Was that was oh. Melissa Joan Hart. I'm very old. You are very old. You also didn't have Nickelodeon. I did, but I never really watched it. Not Rugrats? Uh, a minor amount of rugby. Not Turkey TV? No. Not Danger Mouse? Danger Mouse, yes. This is not a plug for Nickelodeon. Count Duckula, yes. Who didn't love Count Duckula? Uh, apparently the uh, critics. <laughs> they kind of crapped all over it. And with that, I'm stealing a Taco Bell taco. You That's absolutely soft, should. Possibly chicken or, st- or uh, steak. <laughs> but primarily in the comics, you would see Sabrina learning some moral lesson uh, or lesson about using her powers appropriately this or is the school of Doc something Oz, like sweetie. that. Or maybe she'd be traipsing off to a magical dimension called the other realm to learn about uh, magical rules and mythology. And tell me in, in now, the other realm, did she have to end up in silent Hill while we're at it? Or is this just a completely different circumstance? That's a different circumstance. Yeah, cool. Now segue to again, Netflix. Who seems to be producing a lot of this stuff? This is not a plug for Netflix. Uh, And yet it feels it. (laughs) The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina takes an entirely different turn as it's more of an American supernatural horror uh, television series developed by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. I'm most definitely mispronouncing that. Dean, Dean, we don't have time for your fluff of fluff. The series is actually produced by WBTV in association with Berlanti Productions. The exact same people that are responsible for bringing you Riverdale. Bastard. The the Archie bastardization on the WB network. Also known as uh, Riverdale Bad Touch. The, uh, the primary character of who the show centers on, Sabrina Spellman. Uh, is actually portrayed by Kiernan Shipka. Uh, Those of you that might be familiar with the TV show Mad Men would remember her as... um, That one gal. (laughs) The daughter of the the main character. Don Draper? Don Draper's little daughter. The one that had the weight problem. 
You know what's so weird about that whole staple? You know, Don Draper actually fell under the anti-hero uh, uh, thesis. Oh yeah, that definitely. Established with with Sopranos. The difference is it, it would actually be implementing his penis as his firearm. <laughs> And yeah, but all in overall, you've got the crux of the anti-hero. Well, character. and he doesn't he doesn't use a firearm as displayed by his going uh, his going a yeah. wall yeah. during the war. That uh, went well by stealing somebody else's identity and his penis. Apparently, now this one came out pretty fast. It originally started development in September two thousand and seventeen. It was actually intended to come out on the CW as a companion series to Riverdale. But in December of 2017, the project was moved to Netflix. More money, more problems? Yep. It was a straight-to-series order consisting of two seasons. Filming took place in Vancouver with both seasons shot back-to-back. So his second season already out? was knocked out by October 2018. Is uh, second season already out then? Uh, second season is not out yet. The uh, second the second part of the first season is going to be released released in April two thousand and nineteen, and then the second season after that, which has already been paid for. Okay, uh, sixteen episodes that also will be split into two parts. Now, I actually have a friend that has been going on about this series. He informs oh, yeah. me Michelle Gomez plays a role in this. I'm going. I said, but but isn't she currently involved with Doctor Who playing Missy? He goes, oh, no, no, she's been on there predominantly. I'm like, oh, all right. I just started laughing at that, going, yeah, why the hell not? She looks exotic and creepy all at the same time. I'm going, this might work. Now, is this more uh, darker? Oh, this is definite. Well, like I said, We're it's more of a... We're not getting zany banter with the fucking cat. This is actually kind of a more of a graphic depiction then. Oh yeah, like I said, this is more of an American supernatural horror, and they definitely, they definitely focus more on the what's the word I'm looking for? Diabolical themes of witchcraft. All right. In this one, uh, the two ants still raise Sabrina uh, Spellman in this series. Yeah, Hilda. Uh, and, um, yes. Uh, I can't remember the other one. That's a very good question, but I can't remember Zelda the names and, of the uh, ants either all of a Hilda sudden. Hilda and Zelda. Zelda, thank you. That's it. Yeah, well, it's been a while since I actually read the damn series. But in this one, uh, they aren't quite as uh they aren't quite as fun loving. There's actually one scene where uh one of uh Sabrina's aunts is warning her that she doesn't have to sign the dark book of the covenant. I like I said, from the there are there are definite uh, satanic tones in the witchcraft of this series. Uh, she doesn't have to sign the black book on her birthday. And her other aunt, who's very committed to their quote-unquote religion, literally bashes her head in with a shovel and buries her in the uh, the aunt. She buries Jesus. her sister in the in the garden. Her sister, of course, comes back to life. Corrects her, corrects her broken neck. <laughs> so they're more or less immortal unless you lop their head off, or <laughs> something like that. That's okay. true. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, the to drive the point home about the satanic themes in two in November of two thousand and eighteen. Uh, the Satanic Temple, the mm. the actual quote unquote, yeah. you know, organized and recognized yeah. Satanic Temple religion, uh, and Netflix had to reach an amicable lawsuit uh, settlement because Netflix depiction of Baphomet, the demon <laughs> that. Uh, that Sabrina has to sign her uh, her soul over to when she puts her name in this book. You mean the goat? Yes, and the statues they use to represent him in the uh, or the representation representation of him in the in the series mm. looked so similar to the statues used it by the Satanic Temple that they were suing them for uh, likeness. Uh, for 
for copyright and for um, I'm sorry, how do you copyright and for using, infringe and, a well, fucking it was, demon? It was more that they were using the totem of their religion Ugh. in an inaccurate and derogatory way. <laughs> and That's Netflix, right, folks. Angry Satanists. <laughs> I'm going to compile this right next to angry dwarfs and midgets that don't want to be called dwarfs and midgets. I like to imagine the Satanic <laughs> Temple looking exactly like, bullshit. looking exactly like the religious right organizations outside of the uh, outside of the Last Temptation of Christ. Oh God, yes, please. I imagine them in, in uh, button up cardigans and uh, and very conservative uh, blazers and summer dresses, sweaters. Yep, holding their picket signs. So basically, they pulled a West Barrow Church off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, you know you've you, wow. You know you've definitely hit a new hallmark when you've irritated <laughs> Baphomet. Thank God it wasn't be. Uh, uh, now what is the name of that stupid dragon? Uh, TMS. No, TMS. Uh, uh, Arch nemesis. Bahamut. Yeah. Bahamut, the silver damn dragon. Close, you might point. Oh, absolutely. That's because you know, uh, the Christian religion, you know, are really uptight. Conscripts things from all other religions oh, yeah, and no, turns them sense. into satanic references. I know, but I just thought that was absolutely hilarious how people lost their shit over that. Oh, oh my absolutely. God, you remember that? When we were kids, we were just basically getting oh, like yelled that? at for having <laughs> comic books, video games, in all fairness, RPGs. In all fairness, if, uh, you know, when people wanted to find satanic references in uh, in D&D to rail against. Well, yeah. They didn't have to look hard. Yeah, the Fiend's Folio mm-hmm. would have done it right yeah. there. I mean, What's this? Uh, I mean, devil worship? Taking holy out of context? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Extremely. But again, uh, yeah. direct representation and uh, approximation. Yeah, okay. But yeah, no, I just thought... Yep. Uh, but yeah, honestly, no, you got... Uh, you got uh, Michelle Gomez making regular appearances in 21 episodes. Uh, you got Richard Coyle. No kidding. Yep. Lucy Davis. Sorry, nobody could see me just sit there making that momentary. Mm, yeah, that is nice for him <laughs> on that woman. Yes, I had a momentary sexist pig moment. Shame. 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 And believe it or not, uh, the... Uh, you're the, walking on air. The truly, uh, the truly enter- entertaining part for me, okay, is uh, Bronson Pinot, Pinchot, Pinchot, Pinoche, Pinoche. Yes, playing Was he principal. Scaring the little girl. <laughs> Play, playing the puritanical principal uh, George Hawthorne. Oh God! In seven of the twenty-one episodes produced. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. We've been on the whole Netflix gag. Um, Yes, why don't we take a segue away from Netflix then? Oh, no, no. I feel like throwing oh. in a Netflix one myself. Oh, really? Okay. Primarily because I am a huge fan of season one. For fuck's sake, go watch it and watch Daredevil 2 as well. Uh, the Punisher comes back on the 18th of That's January. That's right. Yes, it so, does. Yeah. The only one still in production. Yeah, yeah. Cause, uh, as a Daredevil. Season 3 just is done. It's yep. already finished. They're still iffy on doing a fourth. Yeah. Uh, Iron Fist isn't doing shit. Iron um, Fist is gone. Power Man is gone. I believe they just went with Luke Cage because Power Man sounded incredibly disturbing and or homoerotic. Uh, Jessica Jones. Oh, honey, I doing... watch Power Man anyway. Uh, Jessica Jones isn't doing a season three. No, nope. Jessica Jones is over. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, dig this. Uh, the creator of the show for Cage has already moved them over to Amazon. Oh, really? For Cage, we'll be doing a season three there. Well, and I'm excellent. Going, Smart fucking because move. Because let's watch that whole pantheon and go, hey, that seems like a good idea. And we might get more money out of it. Well, <laughs> hopefully we don't see um, Iron Fist move over. Because let's be honest, that really one like was it, crap. Compared to the other ones, that one was crap. See, my biggest complaint is two, uh, season two came off a little hokey and silly. And I really was looking forward to the dynamic where they actually had Cage and Fist Mm -hmm. side by side. Well, you know why? In all fairness to, uh, in all fairness to Iron Fist, it wasn't entirely their fault. I actually watched a uh, video blog not that long ago that talked about those are never wrong. Well, they talked about the the uh, budgeting restrictions yeah. imposed upon the uh, the television arm of the Marvel universe yeah. as opposed to the yeah. movie arm. 
uh, where they actually have two different uh, men in charge between yeah. the, the different. Yeah, no, they are the, completely separate. Uh, the uh, the main, uh, the primary actor from the Daredevil series even Charlie confirmed, uh, along with the, the main actor from Iron Fist, that there were times where they would come in, learn their fight choreography at the beginning of the day, and then film the and fight shoot. And just shoots. implement it? Yes. Holy Christ. Like four hours after they came okay. in to learn their choreography. A little easier for Iron Fist as he only has to learn Kung Fu, although yeah. that being it, it's a very difficult uh, uh, form to master. But, holy God, Charlie's got to learn uh, new boxing techniques, Kabawea, and Jiu-Jitsu. Holy damn, that is insane. But all that, aside from that, the potential hazards right? that come from trying to implement choreography you just learned mm-hmm. a couple hours before. Oh I, yeah, that's definitely some broken bones and from ribs yeah. of that. Easily. I'm not surprised that, you know, I, I forgive them a little bit that some of the performances came out a little wooden and some of the plot devices were... As wooden as this chair. Contrived, to say the least. <laughs> Which, okay, in all Would fairness... Would you say trope? And even... And even in more fairness to them, let's be honest, when you're working off of comic books, you've got some very contrived plots to oh, work yeah. from in the first place. The biggest one, of course, being avenging dead parents. Oh, yeah. And making certain that no one else ever experiences this same level of pain. Let's face it, folks. At well, the end of the day, superheroes are kind of fucked up. You find me one happy-go-lucky superhero. Making sure no one else feels that pain until somebody else does. And then you yeah. take them in as your ward and yeah. you make them wear brightly colored spandex pants. Yeah, that's weird. No, no, no. I think it's more disturbing to give them the tiny little shorty <laughs> shorts and the pixie boots. Bury that anger down deep. Sir? Yeah. And wear these bright pink leotards. My pa- uh, they're really binding, sir. <laughs> my, my nuts are up in the my The binding ears. in your crotch will help you dampen the pain. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of voice he's going for. <laughs> I prefer more of this Batman. That way it's not all gravity. You can understand him. No, that was my Spider-Man voice. I don't know. I thought that was hilarious. So yeah, Bruce Wayne's got the big gravelly voice, and yet Petey still sounds like... That's it. That's all it sounds like. <laughs> I, I just put a, my scarf in front of my face, and that is the equivalent sound you'd always hear. And the better part of that is always the young kid that has to play Spider-Man again. Yeah, by the way, can we ever have Spidey fucking age, please? For the love of God. Is that really too much to ask? I I just... I wouldn't mind a Spider-Man going to college, for God's sakes. Something. Join the Avengers. Anything. Oh, Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. He did go to college, though, didn't he? Yeah, at least twice. Well, and then Doc Ock took over his brain and produced no, no, no. a company, right? I'm just referencing right? your, your film. <laughs> oh, okay. With Whiny McGuire. Uncle <laughs> <laughs> And then they went back to him being in high school again. And then, <laughs> and then again. they went back to going to high school again. <laughs> because Jesus, no one wants, their, because no one wants their Spider-Man to grow up. Well, they And now he never will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, I can't milf there, didn't they? <laughs> yes, I have heard the terms at milf aimed at poor Marissa Tomei, and I'm going, yeah, Petey's still clueless why all his friends keep coming. Like, oh, you <laughs> yeah, never right. get those cookies. God damn, bend down and get those cookies. Kids See, want the cookie? Yeah, sure. That and was, that's yeah, the unrealistic great. thing. Yeah, he really wouldn't be picked on at school because they'd want to be friends with him to come yeah. over for. Uh, just look at Aunt May's ass. Didn't she make veg- vacuuming and making cookies? Didn't she make vegetarian shit in the new version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. It would just be checking out uh, Marissa Tomei way too much. Oh, yeah, definitely. Gee, Petey, yeah, come on in and with your 17 Buddies high school friends. hiding books over there, <laughs> you know, rather imposing erections. It's so odd. Gee, Petey, why do you have all your friends And I just there? don't understand what's happening. All right. The worst <laughs> bukkake ever. So... Oh, yeah, your sorry, third, that, that was a rude kill right there. Sorry. So for your third comic, then we're talking about Punisher on Netflix? Oh, no. Oh, no, I'd already that made my it. three, actually. What I spent my three wad. Mm-hmm. Oh. Kaboom! Well, that's why I wanted to end on a lighthearted note. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I'm just glad we avoided some of the more darker ones. Oh, yes. Luckily, I, we didn't talk oh, about uh, any okay, dark Okay, I do comics. actually have a question on you. Yeah. What do you think of the prospects of this new Hellboy? 
I mean, I know it's Ooh. not that off topic, and again, that's Marvel good. Or DC, it works. That is because uh, Hellboy is actually a dark horse, uh, a dark horse yep. production. Actually, if you've seen the clips, it looks like they are bit. definitely drawing more from the comic book itself, uh, with the scenes where he's fighting the hill giants. I do have one complaint: the uh, the um, the horse riding uh, knight with the uh, with the stag head yeah. scene I saw a direct reference to one of the earlier comics. I do have one complaint. Mm-hmm. They they let they let Milia Jovovich act again. Look, it's a big yeah. issue for me. I'm sorry, but she's the villain this time. I do love the fact that they have uh, uh, Ian McShane playing the new uh, Professor Broom. I thought it was nice seeing David Harbour as Hellboy. <laughs> I mean, he's not, he's got the jaw for it. Okay. I mean, the, come on. He's got right, the jaw for, for it. For me, the funniest aspect that they're talking about, and I don't know if this is actually true or not, Thomas Hayden Church for Lobster Johnson. I'm going, no one but the Hellboy fans <laughs> are going to have a yes. fucking clue who this is. When I saw that on IMDb as one of the, the characters, I was this, like, oh, they're really doing that? Yeah, the last time this was even referenced was the 2005 video game. And yeah, shocking enough, for your spy boss, yeah, back in the day, was Bruce Campbell was voicing him. I went, oh, that's kind of fun as I'm playing the game. And then I got hung up on a wall. <laughs> yeah, the PC version sucked balls. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, big, hot, sweaty balls. But yeah, no, it pissed me off. And I'm just going, of course, I mean, you, you had to been a little burnt, right? Mm-hmm. The fact that they didn't get to finish what was clearly being set up as a trilogy. Now, I, I don't believe the new Hellboy has the... Uh pyromaniac love interest character in this one. Uh, no, I think they're going to actually implement... Uh, uh, oh, God, what is that girl name? Alice uh, Mon- Monahan. Monahan, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so primarily he's going to be working with... The, and she's kind of what all intents purpose. She's a, a, a history nut, a xenobiologist, a exobiologist, a... Uh, she has way too much PhDs. She's a skill-built character. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can buy that. She's a uh, talented normal. Yes. Yeah, she's a talented normal. We have made gamer references. Don't forget uh, Daniel Day Kim. Is, oh, you uh, mean he who will never age? Yep. Good God. I'm sitting there just going, I know you're in your 50s. When will you look it? But you know who does age? Uh, Thomas Hayden Church. <laughs> Brian Gleason. Oh, well, yeah. That's... Who is also in this uh, in this movie. I love Brian Gleason, by he the way. He is a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. But I'm just curious if it's going to pay off. Now, uh, I Man. know this is... Now, is this primarily going to be a, uh, I, I guess for lack of a better term, British cast? I don't this, know that I would say it's I've primarily British cast. I mean, sure, Brian Gleason, yes. And uh, Ashley Edner, yes. Yeah, Ian McShane. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church isn't British, though. No, no. And, uh, I think he's Canadian. Yeah, um, Mila Jovovich, not British. No, just David annoying. Harbour, not British. Um, I don't know how annoying it is. I've, I've only watched two episodes of Stranger Things. Sophie Okonedo, I not will, British. Uh, yes, she is. What? Sophie Okonedo. Oh, you're right. She is British. Yeah, yeah. She may have done a few things. I don't know. Name one. Name, oh, let's see. Name one. Never don't wear you mention the Ace Ventura. radio series. Okay, fair enough. Radio drama, actually. Uh, Doctor Who episodes playing the... 23rd uh, Queen Victoria? The monkey-handed chick from Aeon Flux? No. <laughs> or monkey-footed? Monkey-footed. <laughs> and she was. She had monkey feet. Well, yeah, I guess she was. It was a little odd. <laughs> well, it was Aeon Flux. It's all a little odd. Yeah. In Aeon fact, Flux the movie... Out there. In fact, the movie toned it down. That's, That's the craziest difficult part. to do. That's the craziest that was all part. Still a, a mind fuck of a film. Yeah. Still couldn't understand why we went with Charisse Theron on that one. I'm like, oh, okay. Well. She was doing things then. What? With her back? Everything. Her ass? I don't she know. was doing all the things. The things she did with her tongue. We had to give her the protagonist. She role. did all the things, okay? I said all the things. Can uh, we just leave did. it at that? She does all the things. But why does she have special gators? <laughs> Do you to ram things up? And like, oh, that's steady on. Oh, All right, you don't need to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm trying to figure out, because I know the director, uh, Neil Marshall, involved in this. Um, you know the director? Not personally. Oh. I, the main reason why I know of him, yes. as I was trying to say, is he is responsible for both Dog Soldiers, which many of us have enjoyed, mm-hmm. a good werewolf tale, 
Kind of a hybrid of alien, uh, Actually, Evil Dead, Aliens, and, and The Howling. Surprisingly good for the budget it had. Yeah, they had a ridiculously Amazingly low budget, and the budget they still got some really good practical effects. Oh, You've yeah. realized those poor fuckers were all on stilts, though. Oh, they yeah. They to walk around in their greater werewolf state. Uh, he also did The Descend and, and that unfortunate Doomsday movie. Yeah. We don't talk about the Doomsday movie. All right, then shall we talk about the uh, bastardization of Lost in Space that he's also responsible for? No, you know actually what I would like to talk about? I had this, You know, cutting the balls off of uh, more than a few characters? I had this random thought last night. Do you, uh, you remember the movie Dogma? Yes, I may have seen and it. And you remember the two angels portrayed by Matt Damon and um, the other guy that's not yeah, Matt okay. Damon. Yeah, the giant forehead guy, the yeah. you know, cave, predominant caveman brow. Amazing mm-hmm. enough, not David Boreas, but Ben Affleck. Yeah, the other guy's not Matt Damon. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I got to thinking... Uh, wouldn't it be hilarious? I, Matt Damon's made a career now of doing little bits in uh, in everything from oh. SNL to uh, okay. to TV shows. Wait, and uh, is this leading up to Neil Marshall's fucking Matt Damon? No, I think okay. uh, I think we need to convince Matt Damon to convince Ben Affleck to do a bit uh, where we, they reprise their roles as those angels in the uh, in the. Uh, what was it? Movie the cow. I can't yeah. remember. Movie the cow. Uh, boardroom scene only with the White House. I kind of like that. Where they're where they're getting ready. Well, they to, are uh, dollars. Where they're getting ready to kill uh, President Trump and all of his cabinet. Mm. They are dollars. But not you, Sarah Sanderson. You can go. You except you lied to me. <laughs> you never compliment me on my trench coat. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't say excuse me, or you didn't say God, God bless, bless me you when I sneezed. sneezed. Yeah. Oh gosh, I think there that would be hilarious. Bad, there were some great bits of that. I think that would be hilarious. Oh, oh yeah. On that subject of Kevin Smith, we have the uh, ridiculously named just to tweak everyone. Mm-hmm. Silent uh, uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot. It has nothing to do with a reboot. Because no. it's the original fellows. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just and I don't know was like, well, I'm confused by it. Um. It's a writer fucking with you again. No, that's not true. He bad touched you. <laughs> so they're going to start over, though. The, oh, the plot line reverses and none of that stuff in Clerks or anything else after that happens. Now, see, that would actually be fun. Because think of just how fucking bizarre you could actually take it. So we've got from young 20-something, who's kind of moderately cynical, mm-hmm. versus I'm almost 50 and could just start going batshit with it. So that means, uh, oh shoot, what was her name? Didn't suffer from that emotional breakdown for giving a hand job to a dead guy in the bathroom. Uh, I thought she blew him. Oh, that was right. No, she rode him. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, it was she, full she, on sex. She fucked yeah. Guy. Yeah. Nobody died in the swimming pool. Oh, yeah, that's a possibility. Yeah. Uh, Joey Lauren Adams didn't play at least three characters. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be good. Mm. Uh, oh, you could say the same thing for um, uh, Jason Lee as well. Yeah, he just has to go back to being, you know, yep. uh, Dave of the Chipmunks. My God, he's sold out quite a few times, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going, I get it, I get it. He's got a wife and kid, I get it. But at the same time, you're going, Jesus, man, these are really turds. But that selling out let him produce things like My Name Is Earl True. and uh, Raising Hope, which this is not a plug for My Name Is Earl or Raising Hope, but definitely watch both of those. They're of hilarious course, series. You, you may have noticed Small Rants wasn't very good. No. Yeah. In all fairness, <laughs> none of his movies were really good. They were just um, fairly good. He himself will say, if you need a team to produce you a movie... You need a $26 <laughs> million dollar flick for your guys. Yeah, that's right. Oh. It doesn't really fu- uh, fully push an envelope, does it? No, no, Honestly, it doesn't. I, I, I made the same comment. I go, you know, if he hadn't got Chasing Amy slam dunked as well as he did... Oh, yeah. I don't think he would be making a single fucking flick after that. And let's be honest, Jersey Girl was, well, kind of painful. We don't talk about Jersey Girl. Oh, but it's out there, Sean. No, it's not. Lurking in the shadows. That's like saying that there's more than one Highlander film. I'd like to admit there wasn't. But there was an excellent TV series that came after the first Highlander film. Honestly, when you really think about it, we are literally the battered housewives of (laughs) sci-fi fantasy. Any Highlander fan's like, your dad's got to be battered. 
<laughs> I, I promise. <laughs> no, and no. Let's be honest. The generation before us were the battered housewives of sci-fi fantasy. They oh, had Beastmaster. They had. Um, oh shoot! What was the one with? Uh, what was the uh, the one where uh, Sean Connery was just like Sasha Baron oh, Cohen God. in that red? Zoran. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zardos. Zardos. Oh, God there we damn go. it! You made me get that visual in my head again. <laughs> It's, it's Sean Connery and all his fuzziness walking around in a man key. And then let's not forget the one where John Boy flew a spaceship in a uh, in a battle against. Um... <laughs> what? How about Last Starfighter? Yeah. While we're on the subject, Last Starfighter is actually is actually oh, a oh, tier I, above. I do have a side note for that. Yeah, uh, his co-pilot. Alex is played by Alex Oteron, or you might know better as the old man from RoboCop One and Two. Really? Under all that makeup is the old man. I thought that was, I always thought it was Luz Gossett Jr. No, just no, reprising no, that, his role from Enemy Mind. No, amazing enough, there is some similarity, but I'll help you out. <laughs> One of them's really white. And Luz Gossett Jr. Luz Gossett Jr. Yeah, I saw exactly. Luz Gossett Jr., yeah. Iron Eagles. Oh, God. Hey, oh, I do have a really sad one for Luz yeah. Gossett Jr. Now, bear in mind, this is just coming off the, the, the sheer cusp of an officer and a gentleman. Yeah. Where does he end up in? The powers of Matthew Starr. Oh, no. For the entire oh, fucking yeah. series. I just started That's laughing true. at that. <laughs> Chris, when you really, and for you Friday the 13th fan nuts, you'll love that Matthew Starr is in part four of said Friday the 13th, and his bestest buddy, played by Amy Steele, is in the second <laughs> Friday the 13th. One of the first people to survive the Jason Voorhees. Oh, it was the terrifying potato sack era. Yes, he's in bibbies and got a potato sack on. Oh, shit, no. I'd be shitting myself, too. No. I'm going to be having, you know, the, the Town of the Dread Sundown uh, flashbacks. So, that brings us back to In Recap. Once again, don't forget, on uh, Amazon Prime, you can check out that <laughs> excellent Russian superhero film, The Guardians. Uh uh, Rocketeer came out on Blu-ray uh, oh sorry four years ago four years. <laughs> just get up your ass and go buy it <laughs> it's probably in the five dollar bin exactly. at Walmart yeah, go pick it up it's hey, a I found, uh, it's a gem in the dust Expendables in there as well as Cool Hand Luke you should find those movies in come there come on man Cool Hand Luke what the fuck was it doing All there right, with the fair. it doesn't got belong next to the Expendables right? that's true that's like saying uh Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid belongs next to the yeah, exactly. We'll just set right next to our every copy yeah. of Ishtar ever created. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, while you're in digging through that Blu-ray bin and you pick up that copy of uh, Rocketeer, grab a copy of uh, Sneakers, too. <laughs> and while you're at it, when you look for the more obscure... Uh, uh, oh, God. The, the, the best collection of the uh, Italian horror films is just mm. getting weird and weirder. But I would like you to, to avoid the, the director known as Jesus Franco. While uh, predominantly does pornography, both hard and softcore, he has this unfortunate genre soft. known as horror erotica. Loosely translates softcore porn with a pseudo-semi-quasi-plot. <laughs> Somewhere in there, there'll just be a lot of titty. I'm really sick of reviewing Jesus Franco. <laughs> Stop fucking suggesting it, please. And no goddamn trauma movies. I'm telling you right up front, no trauma movies. I'm not going to get another goddamn request for that stupid Sergeant Kabuki <laughs> man. Fuck that. I'm not doing it. There's nothing. I got nothing against Lloyd Kaufman. I just don't want to sit there, this fucker. And actually, before we get to the things that are not out yet, a couple of honorable mentions should probably go out to, oh. don't forget, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and oh, all their different uh, uh, incarnations Except on film. Except for those Bay issues. <laughs> oh, let's think. Uh, <laughs> some other folks that uh, who've got uh, films out there that came from comics that were not in the... Uh, oh. Don't forget the tick, of course. Oh yeah, gotta have the uh, tick. That's the, a, that's two live actions and a cartoon. Yeah, the cartoon was excellent. I the love original Patrick Warburton as as the tick. I was I'm gonna say gonna the lie. original Fox live action. It only ran for one season, oh, but hilarious. So While the new Prime original is not as uh, intentionally funny. No, no, it's as, kind of uh, trying to be a little more darker, like like it, the comics were. But it, and uh, going with more of a, a linear storyline. Yeah. Than the uh, less slapsticky. I yeah. noticed. 
But it's definitely worth a watch, too. Oh, yeah. And, of course, don't forget uh, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is out there on Netflix right now. Uh, with no idea we were Netflix pitch, man. <laughs> But apparently we are. And of course, don't forget that in, uh, what is it, January 25th, the 25th, so uh, 15 days from today, since it's the 10th right now, mm-hmm. uh, on January 25th, uh, Polar drops on, uh, on Netflix Yeah, uh, with, um, oh... What did we say his name was? Uh, Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. Uh, Catherine Winnick, Matt Lucas, Vanessa Hutchinson. Ooh, Vanessa uh, Hutchinson. Interestingly enough, on a side <laughs> note, uh, Vanessa Hutchinson actually is kind of shoehorned in there. Yeah. Uh, because watching the previews. That's all you can do with her. She's a, well, apparently, uh, much like how Red, the comic, didn't involve a love interest. Yeah. They shoehorned her in there for the movie. Vanessa Hutchinson's character is actually somebody that uh, Mads Mikkelsen's version of um, of Black Kaiser takes an interest in, whereas Kaiser in the comic Susan. there is no there is no uh, normal friend out there in the middle of nowhere that he takes a liking to. I mean, the violence actually starts some forty four panels in, <laughs> uh, right there in the very beginning, twenty four of which are just on page nine because. Uh, Oh, uh, Santos has this weird habit of occasionally putting out a single page that's like 24 panels of rapid fire close up action oh, yeah. of little heads exploding scenes. and stomach lines. Yeah. And, and then February 15th is when we have uh, the release of the Umbrella Company uh, limited Jesus. series. Are you, are, you just, for Netflix. are you just hawking for Netflix? Am I seeing a fucking percentage in any of this? Hold on one second. <laughs> Netflix. Yeah. Oh, uh, quick, oh, shit, you know, we never talked about the Kingsman. That's right, we didn't. There was another, a nod should ah, go out to the Kingsman. Yeah. Two excellent spoofy, well, two excellent one. spoofy films. I'll give it the first one. The second one, a little more camp, but. Well, yeah. they were, they were all supposed to be camp. I mean, True. they are, they are very much in the flavor of In Like Flynn, or. Yeah. Our, our man Flint. Our, our man Flint and yep. in like Flint. Yeah. Uh, no, I, okay, actually, I was going to ask As you, well as now, uh, Casino Royale. Is the Magicians that are currently on Sci-Fi, now, is that actually direct correlation with the DC Vertigo series? No. That is actually... So that's sci-fi fantasy. That is a, from a, a book, book series. series. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, everyone was arguing about Deadly Class on that, and I got confused between the two, and I'm going, you know what? I can't watch <laughs> every goddamn TV show, considering that's kind of my fucking gig already. Yeah. And that's true. Deadly Class, though, is actually an image comic. Okay. That's what I thought. Based around in the 1980s era, uh, Reagan, Reagan oh. political environment. No! Uh, roughly where, if I remember right, he had, uh, Re- uh, Ronald Reagan had just uh, cut funding to the National uh, uh, Mental Health Administration or uh. Mental Health Organization, uh, putting... Hmm. Hundreds. Yet another Republican doing the same yeah. thing. Go figure. Putting hundreds or even thousands of mentally unstable people you back out me. on the street without any support or resources. And then they go meta. <laughs> and the uh, and actually the main character or super if you prefer the main character finds himself in the situation where he gets recruited by this assassin's high school. Yeah, yes, see, that's an assassin's perfect. high school because a mentally unstable woman jumped off of a bell tower. To commit suicide yeah. and landed on his parents, killing them, <laughs> leaving him a yeah, homeless making orphan. Making him a cutter vegetable <laughs> and an orphan. I love it. Who later goes on to be a superhero because his parents were killed and in front a of him. Powerfully rich orphan. <laughs> yeah, seriously, how much more could Alfred do? I mean, I got to ask this, you bat fans. I got to ask this right now. Alfred is MI6, a combat medic. A mechanic, a butler. He is polished the man silver. I mean, how much fucking more could Alfred do for this prick? He could be Jeremy Irons. Oh well, that might be asking too much of anyone. And yet he's done it. Bum bum bum. Does he have large uh, teleportation powers too? He does, and nipples on his costume. Oh well, naturally. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, no. My friend uh, Tony. <laughs> this great analogy. He actually took it darker for Batman and Robin because I was like, well, who's going to be terrified of that guy? He goes, no, no. I guess I got it so much worse. So his scenario is Batman abducts them 
and he and Robin take turns pegging him with these bat dildos. He had this whole elaborate, like, uh, disco dungeon effect going. So all you hear is that horrible music from uh, Pulp Fiction that oh, they brought out. No. The Bat Gimp. Yeah. They have this whole series. So the guy is stripped down to his little tidy whities gets dumped from the Batmobile. Little note pinned to his flesh. And oh the guy's my. just crying his fucking eyes out. And I'm like, so Batman fights crime by sodomizing villains? He goes, yeah, man. It gets that. It gets fucking and then, weird. And then Dumbledore comes in and forget is everything. Oh, I know. But I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> um, I go, okay, it's an interesting analogy. I can't see how you would bring it up in conversation. Forget Atticus. Forget Atticus. We're getting us cube, man. <laughs> My anus was stretched like this, man. You can't forget that. Not your ring piece. Well, actually, I, I don't think anything... I always had a bat ring that deep. What is it? Nothing gets really darker in the with the Batman lore than the, where it was uh, Bruce Wayne that died. And his mom turned into the Joker. And dad becomes Batman. Yeah. With twin 45s. Yep. And, yeah, actually, I kind of like Thomas Wayne. He was yeah. a bad motherfucker. So you actually got to see Flashpoint or are you oh, just yeah. talking about when you read it? No, no, I saw both. Uh, I I read the uh, I read the uh, limited, and I watched uh, unfortunately the flash. Oh, come on, that was actually a decent flag. No, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Pony Boy Curtis can't be Zoom. I get it. <laughs> this is where you're at. He can do camel spiders, but God forbid he get to play a badass supervillain. Okay, I get yep. You. This is true. It yes, is. that no. sir is profiling, and that ain't right. No, that's that's recognizing somebody's limitations. Well, why do you think it was voice work? It's oh, like we're asking to run around and do each Wow, track. really? Yeah, As I we sit to... here behind these microphones, we're going <laughs> to mock the people that do voice work? Oh, God, no. Well, <laughs> only the folks that did uh, Resident Evil 1. All right. Oh, no, I take that back. And Silent Hill 1. Those Ma- were pretty painful, too. All of Matt Mercer's friends are at the door oh. waiting for you right now. Still I don't know why they keep worse. cracking their knuckles. Man, they were quick. I just told them. <laughs> I just left that message just at 20 minutes ago. I'm a little you know, uh, sissy fanboy. Yeah, who are we kidding? It's Thursday. They're doing a live performance right now. They're yeah. not here. Yeah, exactly. They actually have an audience. <laughs> yeah. Ours has been packed up like 40 minutes ago. I'm like, this shit still Are they going still on. talking? On that note of oh are my they God. still talking? We're at an hour 40. Yeah. I was kidding. <laughs> and then I just looked up going, yeah, we really are at an hour 40. All right. Okay. Let's put the lid on this can. Yeah, we well, have once again ensured that, yeah, well, I'm not going to get laid by uh, you being a wingman. That's for damn sure. Ugh, really should have hung out with Brandon. Oh, wait. What, Never wingman mind. don't caca? No, no. Caca. Got cold, maybe. <laughs> well, oh, this has there. been fun. This is Rotten Rambling On. This is Sean. I'm Jake, apparently. Stay frosty. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, is that trademarked? No, I don't think so, but okay. uh, you could have said uh, always keep your powder in your pants dry. <laughs> All right, what that is. Here from the trash can, put a lid on it. Oh, hopefully I see. Like, yeah, sit on your high blood pressure. We're out, folks. Have a good one. <laughs>